back to Arc Tutorials. This is Angular 14 Complete CRUD Tutorial Masterclass Series. In today's episode, I'm going to talk to you about a brand new feature of Angular, which is standalone components. We'll also learn about how do you use standalone components. We'll see standalone pipe, standalone directive, and also we'll see how to use it with existing modules and much more. Let's get started. This is a bonus uh, episode that I've added to the CRUD series. Uh, originally, I had planned eight tracks, uh, but this one is an additional since a lot of you have been asking me about the Angular standalone component. So I'm doing this complete tutorial on it. If you haven't checked out the first two parts, please do uh, do so. Uh, first three parts. Um, the entire project code base, I'll make it available and share the GitHub link or the Gumroad link with you. You can download the free Angular theme that I'm using in this particular series from rappixel.com. There are a lot of excellent uh, templates there that you can use and download. If you want to learn and master JavaScript with me, please download the ebook that I have published at arctutorials.gumroad.com. Finally, if you have any doubts in any of the series, please write to me directly at surya.aradhya at gmail.com. Alright, so what are we building? We are building the contacts.google.com. We are trying to build something similar to uh, this particular application from Google and we'll try to replicate some of its uh, features by creating contacts, updating contacts, deleting, editing, autocomplete and filter. Alright, so let's now talk about this episode. We'll talk about standalone component directives and everything. I'll answer all the questions that you have in order to get you mastering standalone components. So first of all, what is a standalone component, right? In Angular, typically every component needs to have an entry in ng module, right? It can be in, a, in your app module or it can be in your custom lazy loading module, etc. But a standalone component can be part that does not need to be part of ng module, but can be used everywhere else. Okay, I'll explain you with complete hands-on. So stay with me on this while I'm, I'll explain the theory first and then we'll do the hands-on. So the so definition is a standalone component is a component that is not, not part of any ng module. Now what all can be made standalone? In Angular 14 onwards, you can make a component as a standalone, you can make pipes or you can make directives. These are the three things that you can make standalone. Now what has changed in component then? Right. So typically when we generate a component, you'll see three entries. One is for template, one is for style and one is for the, that's the component decorator. Okay. I think now is the time I should show you the code and then we can learn more about it. So let me open source. This is existing. Okay. So don't worry anything what you see here. This is not standalone yet. This is a typical general component. It would have a selector, template URL and style URLs. This is what happens when you generate a regular component. And if you see this particular component will have an entry here in the co contacts module in this case. So this is a component create component. It will have an entry in declarations. This is a standard process. But once we generate the component as a standalone component, you would see two more entries like standalone and imports. I'll show you in just a bit. Now, how do you generate a standalone component? We use the command ng generate component component name. Now this is where the new edition is, which is hyphen hyphen standalone. Okay. So let's go ahead and try that. So let's generate a new component and I'm going to call it uh, ng generate component. Uh, for now you can give any name since we are testing it. Um, I'm going to say list countries, right? Again, just any component you can give for now it's learning hyphen hyphen stand alone. Okay. That's the new edition in angular 14. So let's see that now. So when I generate this, it will go into app under app, but it will not make an entry in app module. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to generate two components, one without standalone, one with standalone to give you the difference. So first I'm generating a component by the name list countries. And you see here, these are the four files it generates for component. This is the important thing that you should look at, which is update app module. That means when you generate a normal component, it will generate all the component related files and make an entry in app module. So now when you go to app module and if you look for that list countries component, you will see that entry in ng module under declarations, right? This is a normal component. 
Now let's go ahead and do the same with standalone component. So here I'm going to say list states, okay? And the parameter I'm passing is hyphen hyphen stand alone, all right? Now hit enter, you would see only component getting generated. See here, there is only component. There is no updation to the module, okay? So now if you see your app module, there is no entry for list states. It will not do any entry in app module because standalone components does not require ng module but you can see here the component is generated now take a look at this component earlier i told you that what has changed in component then it will add two more properties which is standalone and imports so if you see here standalone and imports are the two new properties in the component decorator normal component that we generated will not have those these are optionals but you can add them I'll show you in just a bit that also so what has changed in the component decorator two new properties are added one is standalone equal to true and imports is common module but it does not have any entry in your ng module or any module okay so that is the concept of these all the four things I hope it's clear now similarly you can generate a pipe a directive so how do you generate that same process instead of component now you will make it a pipe so you can say ng generate pipe and let's say this is uh, say currency pipe or some some pipe that you want to give name for now let's call it currency pipe and again the option you will pass is hyphen hyphen stand alone and then enter again it has generated only the pipe with an option standalone is true okay now same way you can do for directive so directive and give the directive name let's say highlight row is my directive name and again you'll pass the parameter hyphen hyphen standalone so see it generated but again no entry anywhere because it is standalone is equal to true all right so i hope so far it's clear to you all of this what is a standalone component what all can be generated a component pipe and directive what has changed we are adding two new properties when we say standalone we are saying standalone is equal to true and imports will be added how do you generate ng generate component component name followed by hyphen hyphen parameters standalone for pipe it will be ng generate pipe pipe name hyphen hyphen standalone and for generating a standalone directive ng generate directive directive name hyphen hyphen standalone till here i hope it's clear now let's see what happens so do we need to include it in any module no you don't have to we saw here that when we generate a component it did not make any entry but let's say by mistake you add it okay let's see what happens it will give you an error okay list countries component oh, list countries is already there so list states I think that's the what is the name uh, list states component right so let's take that so when you try to add it now see it will give you error and that's what we want to make sure I'm trying to show you the error itself so which is good dot slash list state slash list states component and okay so here now when we go ahead and add it in declarations like this and run our application you would see that it will give you error it will tell you that it's a standalone component so just wait for a couple of seconds in the meanwhile if you like this tutorial please do hit that subscribe button please do hit the like button to keep encouraging me all right so here we can see um, here it says component list states component is a standalone component and cannot be declared in an ng module all right so that's what we just learned that a standalone component Need, doesn't need not to be included in a module okay it need not to be in a module it should not be in a module rather okay so let's delete this here and go back and now it will compile successfully so then how do we import it into the required modules 
right that's the next question that comes up let's say you are using something say form module okay in say state i want to use uh, say forms module so you will use it in the imports array you will type here whatever module you would require okay so let's say your form you are using in the form ng form and all that so regular template driven or reactive form or whatever form you want to use you would just import it directly into the component inside the imports array that's the important thing so how do you inject the required modules you require you inject them right into the imports array of the component okay remember that so that's a that's a key thing now how do we import required modules for the component right now this is a tricky thing let's say you already have a module right let's say you already have app module now you want to use the list states in this as a standalone it's a standalone component you want to use it in this module somewhere how do you use it right let me show you that first by doing this i'm going to add app list states component which is the state component right app list state components which is standalone is equal to true now i want to use it in this component which is app.html now it will give error because i cannot directly use it right so then what do we do we go to module not in declarations you will not import it in declarations you will write it in a array here in the imports array remember this is the biggest change that you would see if it's a standalone component you will use it inside the declarations of any module and not you sorry you will not write it in declarations you will write it in the imports okay see i'll repeat this once again if it's confusing list state is a standalone component i want to use it in app component right let me show you the output maybe that would help you okay you see here list state works this is coming directly from this list state but list state is a standalone component and if i want to use it in any other place any other module i need to go to that module and usually we will write it in declarations all the components but now since it's a standalone component you will write it inside the imports array like this okay i hope it's clear now if not write to me in the comment section i will try to explain you with example now how do we import it in an existing module i just showed you that that is by importing in the imports array and not in declarations right so that's what we just discussed about this particular standalone component that is used in an app module by importing it into the imports array now this is the homework for you how do you import a standalone directive into app module right simple same process we will do import and say currency right not currency pipe from angular on currency pipe which we have generated custom one and then again since it's a standalone you would go into the imports array and save it there you go so you can use the pipe also into the imports as long as it is a stand alone pipe like this now same way again give it a try with directive if you have a stand alone directive you will do a import and then you can do something like highlight highlight row directive and you will pass it into the imports array since it's a stand alone directive right i hope it's clear i am going to show you one last example of it and then i'll uh, let you have any questions and share it with me so this is a component that we have if we want to use something here app list states component if i want to use this it will give error because it is not part of the contacts module so what do we do yes that's right we will have to add it here and say list states component into the imports and now it is successfully compiled now when we go to create we should see that message and here we see list state message state works right for the create route for the contacts 
right but if I go back and say view again it's it's a parent one so it will work for contacts since I've added it into the imports if I don't do it here if I try to do it here it will give me error that it is a standalone directive and cannot be part of okay it, it will tell me that it cannot be part of it instead it has to be part of the in the contacts module app state and list state we already added did we delete it okay we deleted it so let's add it here list states component so this error message will go away and same way if you want to highlight the directive if you add it here it will tell you that it is a standalone directive use it in the imports array now this is good code it will compile successfully all right so that's all about uh, standalone components a new addition to angular 14 i hope it's clear to you please go through these notes that i've created for you these are the nine pointers that you should know everything about standalone components it will help you and this is a brand new feature in angular 14 which a lot of companies or enterprises will definitely upgrade since they will build a lot of components which can be shared easily. Let me know if you have any doubts or queries in the comment section or write to me directly. If you like my work and tutorials, please consider giving YouTube super thanks to me. We'll continue our CRUD functionality in the next episode with list data functionality. Thank you so much for joining in this series. I hope you're learning and enjoying as much as I enjoy bringing it to you. Thank you and see you in the next episode.